So I'm in the polytunnel today. It's uh, the end of October, just starting November. Uh, the chrysanthemums, as you can see, are in full flower. They're doing really, really well, as tall as me. And they will carry on until um, Christmas, I think. Um, they're protected in the polytunnel, so they'll keep flowering a lot longer. And um, we're starting today to plant or prepare to plant our spring bulbs. We talked about in the last video that we were sowing hardy annuals to get those started um, to be early flowers next year. And of course the other early flowers are the spring bulbs. So we're going to prepare today ranunculus and anemones. And we grow those because they're a bit more unusual, in, um, a bit harder to get hold of, and um, they need a bit of preparation. So today we're going to um, pre-sprout them. So you start by, they're, they're tiny little corms and they, uh, they look like little shriveled walnuts, the anemones, and the ranunculus look like little tiny claws, like hands. And um, you pre-soak them in water for about three to four hours, and then you take them out of the water and you have a, tra a seed tray of compost half full, and you just sprinkle them across the top of that, and then cover them, fill up the tray with more compost and then leave them in a cool place for a couple of weeks and basically lots of little tiny hair-like roots start to develop and it's called pre-sprouting them and that just gives them a head start when you put them in the ground. So two weeks after we've done this process we'll get them out of the trays and we'll have prepared the ground to plant them so we'll deal with that in another session. And um, they are both perennial, um, although I think maybe the flowers slow down after a few years, but we'll, that's, uh, that's how they grow. And they need a bit of protection, so they don't like temperatures below, say, minus seven. So you, the, we're in, they're going to grow in our polyton. You could grow them under cloche or something like that. And the other thing we're going to do today is plant alliums outside. Um, so we will plant those... 10 centimeters apart quite close and uh, they're the onion family and they will um, be quite early bloomers early summer bloomers and a really nice addition to the bouquets and we'll wait a little bit longer for planting the tulips so tulips like they're to be real cold before you plant them because it makes them less likely to catch viruses so we'll wait till there's a frost till it's it's really cold and then we'll plant our tulips and um, we'll also plant outside some narcissi uh, probably next week we'll get on with that they can go in a bit earlier and spring bulbs for us it's quite an investment because bulbs are obviously more expensive than seed so we have to work you know we're going to put those in our boot spring bouquets and hopefully that will uh, recoup the investment that we've made in them but they're um, beautiful things we we try to also grow things that aren't readily available so you you can get really cheap bunches of daffodils and um, tulips and we can't compete with that they're grown commercially often not very sustainably so we grow things that we try to get them to be scented and we try to do more unusual types like parrot tulips and um, double tulips and um, different types of daffodils. So we do a narcissus cheerfulness, which has got like uh, multiple uh, flowers on one stem and it's very scented and very beautiful. So that's what, um, so it's an exciting time of year getting those spring bulbs in the ground ready to flower next year. Okay, wow, so it's December and there's a lashing rain outside and it's actually turned a bit colder. So it really is time to get the tulips in now. And um, just to recap, we pre-sprouted the ranunculus and anemones in the trays of compost and they all created these little white um, fibrous roots and they even started sprouting. And then we um, have planted them in the polytunnel and we've planted them at a depth of about two or three inches deep 
and about 10 to 15 centimeters apart and they so in our polytunnel it's a meter wide bed and it makes about four or five rows um, and uh, they're all growing away they've uh, they've sprouted they're coming up they're looking really good and if you missed the opportunity to plant renonks and anemones in the autumn you can do it in the spring um, they'll just flower a bit later and you can do them outside you don't have to do them in a polytunnel just you need to protect them from anything that's like less than minus seven and um, so today we're going to do the tulips and we're going to do them three different ways we're going to do one batch outside in the ground we're going to do one batch in the polytunnel in the ground and we're going to do both of those in trenches and then we're going to do one batch in a crate so that we could move it outside or have it inside depending on the weather next spring and um, that way we should spread our flowering time out the ones in the polytunnel will flower first the ones out the side might be a bit later and the ones in the crate we can move it according to whether we want them to come early or late um, but the idea is the same basically you dig a trench about six inches deep about a meter wide and then you plant them quite close together so a bit like eggs in a carton in a, eggs in an egg box there's like an inch between them not touching but just a small gap between them and uh, if you're planting them outside you just dig the trench put them in and backfill the soil and if you're doing it in the polytunnel you need to water the base the water the soil at the base just to um, get the roots off to a good start because they're not going to get the rain in the polytunnel and if you're doing them in a crate um, you also peel them so again the roots are just are a bit easier to get started in a kind of artificial environment of being in a crate of soil um, so that's the plan for today and at the same time we've also been busy outside thankfully we got it all done before all this rain um, digging beds for new perennials and for woody perennials and um, the volunteers and our work experience people have been digging like mad they've done a great job and we're ready to get those in the ground in the next couple of weeks um, so they can get their roots down over the winter and be off to a good start in the spring um, and the other jobs we have still to do we've um, lifted the chrysanthemums cut them back lifted them potted them up uh, just to overwinter them in the polytunnel and then today we have finally dug up the dahlias so we've had a couple of frosts the the leaves all blackened and um, s stopped growing and basically we waited till then it's like a signal to the tuber that growing is over they can go dormant so we have um, today uh, taken down all the stuff around them and lifted the tubers and gently sort of shaken off as much of the mud as we can taken off any rotting tubers um, and any uh, stems cut the stems down quite short a few inches above the tubers and we've packed them into crates loosely left them into crates and we've put them into the polytunnel to just dry out a bit we want some of the soil to dry out um, so that we can shake off more of the soil you don't want to pack them away too wet because they'll rot um, so you need to get that uh, soil off and then just have a thin layer maybe um, of dryish soil ar around them or you, you can wash them off completely if you want to make more plants you can divide the tubers but we don't really have any space for any more so we're keeping them as um, they've grown into nice fat uh, fat tubers and we're going to keep those overwinter them till next year and then we'll pot them up get them shooting wait till the frosts are over and get them back out in the ground um, so that's the plan for the dahlias and you eventually when they've dried out you stack them into crates with dryish compost or you could use perlite if you've got it uh, but we don't want to buy that specially so we'll just get some dry compost and 
you can use newspaper and stack them into crates and keep them in a cool um, dry place away from any pests in, in, like rodents mice I mean and um, just keep them keep a check on them through the winter so they don't start to you don't keep any rotting uh, tubers touching any of the other ones you need to take those out because it will um, stop start the whole thing rotting and uh, that's it they'll be ready to go again next year so we are nearly wrapped up for winter just in time and um, ready to start again next year <laughs>